Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Today is our lesson number 145. Today we'll do some problems on the topic of radicals. The first video in the series of four. Let's see what we have first. The very first problem. We're given. 3 times 97 squared plus 97 squared and we are being asked to take the square root of it. What I want you to do is, as always, pause the video, do it yourself first. Once you have done it, then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a few seconds time. One more time, 3 times 97 squared plus 97 squared. Well, what we need to understand here is, if we have something like this, A times B plus B times C, what we can do, what can we do here? Well, what we have to realize is that this B that we see there appears in both terms. It appears in the first term as A times B. It appears in the second term as B times C. B is what is known as the common factor. It's the common factor. We can take it out. B comes, B would, B would comes out, and then now, AB, when you take a quantity AB and you divide by B, you're left with A. You see, when you multiply it, you're going to get your AB again. And similarly, from this term, when we take out B, we are left with C. And again, if you were to open the parenthesis and re-undo it, if you were to open the parenthesis and undo it, you'll end up, you'll end up getting what we started out with, which is A times B, which is right here, and B times C, which is right there. Same exact thing is going on here. Here, our common factor is 97 squared. 97 squared is a common factor. Another thing we have to understand is that this, this quantity here, it says 97 squared, which is same as 97 squared times 1. So we're going to take out 97 squared as a common factor. That's our common factor. 97 squared, we can take it out. Once we take out 97 squared common as, as a common factor, what are we left with from the first term? Once we take out 97 squared as a common factor, what we are left with here is 3. Again, if you were to undo it, we will get 97 squared times 3. You see, 97 squared times 3. From the second term, once we take out 97 squared, we are left with 1. This is what we have. And again, if you were to undo it, we will end up getting our 97 squared back. So that's it. Now we have to take the square root of it. Now we have to take a square root of it. But before we take the square root of it, we can write 97 squared times 3 plus 1, which is simply 4, which is 2 squared. 3 plus 1 is 4, which is simply 2 squared. That's it, we're done. Square root of 97 squared times 2 squared is simply 97 times 2. Our answer is 97 times 2. 97 times 2. That's our answer. Let's do one more. Twenty-five times three plus fifty times three. Go ahead and do it yourself. I'll give you five seconds to unpause and pause the video. But what we need to understand here is that what we need to understand here is that if we take if we take 3 as a common factor, if we end up taking 3 as a common factor, if we take it out 3, here we are left with 25, and here we are left with 50. We'll end up with 3 times 75, we'll end up with 3 times 75, the square root of it, and we cannot take a square root of 3, we cannot take a square root of 75, because they are, because they are both not perfect squares. That's not going to get us anywhere. So we have to find a root where we end up with a perfect square. And that root is going to be, let me erase all of this, so taking the 3 out is not going to get us anywhere. What we need to do here is this. 25 times 3 will remain 25 times 3 because 25 is a perfect square. If we can get a 25 out of this quantity, we are done. So 50 times 3 can be written as 25 times 6. 50 times 3 can be written as, this 50 right here can be written as 25 times 2 and then times 3. So now we have our 25. 
Now we take 25 com as a common factor. From here we are left with 3 and from this guy we are left with 2 times 3 which is 6. From the second term we take out 25 we are left with 2 times 3 which is 6. That's it, we are done. Now we take the square root of it. The square root of 25 times 9 is simply 5 times 3. Why 5 times 3? Because now they are both perfect square. Now they are both perfect square. 25 times 9 is simply 5 squared times 3 squared, which is simply 5 times 3. Let's do one more. Let's do it on, on the side here. Square root of 9 times 5 plus 18 times 10. 9 times 5 times 18 times 10. I'm going to squeeze this thing to the side here so that it doesn't take so much room. So this was simply square root of 25 times 3 plus 25 times 6. And that 3 came out here and that 6 comes out here. And 25 was the common factor. The same exact thing is going to apply here. We have to find some number that's a perfect square. 9 is the perfect square. Somehow we have to get a 9 out of that one. Which is very easy because 18 can be written as 2 times 9. 2 times 9 is 18. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to write our 18 as 2 times 9 times 10. And this guy is just 9 times 5. And now we take a square root of it. This is going to be our common factor. 9 is going to be our common factor. We take out 9 as a common factor. From here we are left with 5, and from this term we are going to be left with 2 times 20, 2 times 10 rather. We are left with 2 and a 10, 2 times 10 is 20, it comes out here. Now you notice here, we get a 9 and then here we get 5 plus 20 which is 25. So we end up with 9 times 25, which is simply 3 squared times 5 squared. We have to take a square root of it, which is simply going to be 5, because we are supposed to take a square root of this quantity. Now the reason why I left all reason why I left both of these on the blackboard side by side listen carefully the reason I left them on the blackboard side by side is because neither of these problems neither, neither of these problems will make a good candidate to appear on any of these exams ACT, SATTs, GMAT, GRE, it doesn't matter which one you're preparing for this, neither of these questions will appear on the exam why? because they are too simple they are so simple in fact listen, listen carefully they are so simple in fact that instead of using this strategy, instead of using this technique, anybody can do these problems by simple brute force. You can do it simply by brute force. For example, 9 times 5 is 45, 9 times 5 is 45, and 10 times 18 is 180, and we can add them up, 5, 12, carry, carry 2, carry 1, and then 2, 225, the square root of 225 is 15. We can do it with the brute force in a matter of seconds. This, this, this will not make a good candidate to appear on the exam. Similarly, this, can, this will not appear on the exam because it's too simple. Three, 3 times 25 is 75, and 3 times 50, 3 times 25 is 75, and 3 times 50 is 125. That's 5, 2, carry 1, 225, square root of 225 is 15. Neither of them will make a good candidate. The next problem that I'm going to put, you on, put on the blackboard, I want you to use the same technique. It's the technique that you want to learn. I want you to use the same technique, same rationale, same method, and do it yourself. Here's the next problem. Eight times thirty-two plus sixteen times twenty, and we have to take the square root of it. Go ahead, do it yourself. So what do we notice? Do we notice any do we notice any any quantity among the four quantities that are presented to us? Do you notice any quantity that is a perfect square? The answer is yes, of course. 16 is a perfect square. We have to somehow get a 16 out of this one. So we're gonna write our 32 as this 8 is just gonna come down, and we're gonna write our 32 as 2 times 16. 2 times 16 plus 16 times 20. There we go. Now now we can take the 16 as a common factor. 
when we take out 16 as a common factor, from here we are left with 8 times 2, which is 16, and here we are left with 20, which is simply 16 times 16 plus 20, which is 36, and now we can take a square root of it. The square root of 16 times 36 is simply, is just simply 4 squared times 6 squared, which is just going to be, which is just going to be 24. The answer, final answer is 24. The final answer is 24. Now, here's what we'll, I'll give you a couple of seconds so that you have an unobstructed view. Okay, here's, here's, here's what we'll do next. I'm going to give you four problems on the blackboard, one after the other. 49 times 33 plus 7 times 21. 25 times 2 plus 50 times 7. 8 times 22 plus 8 times 22 plus 16 times 70 and finally 28 times 12 plus 32 times 2. We are to take the square root of all of these quantities, all of these four questions. I'm not going to do them right now. This is your homework for tomorrow. Before you watch the next video, before you watch the next video, day number 146, make sure you do these problems ahead of time. We're going to do this tomorrow, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.